February is a time for love, especially if you love video games as much as Sam Moscovich from Ars Technica. Welcome back to the show, Sam. Hi, yes, I love video games. We're here to talk about video games, video games, video games. <laughs> yes. And That's you what say, we do here. That is what I'm you do uh, here. You say it's a good month for gamers. Uh, let's start with, uh -oh. uh, I'm going to probably pronounce this wrong, Neo. N -I -O Neo. Neo? N -I yeah, Neo. Okay. N-I-O-H. It might be Nio, Neo. Either way. Uh, yeah, February is surprisingly loaded with games, I want to say, because uh, all these game makers come up with stuff and they think they're going to get it ready in time for Christmas. And then they look at what games are coming out and they say, you know what, we're not going to compete with that. And we think grownups are willing to buy games other seasons. So yeah, this February is crazy. And the first game I want to throw out there that's coming out next month is called Neo. A short version, uh, Dark Souls has been very big. Uh, it's the kind of game that's very hard where you have to swipe a sword really. It, it, it takes a long time to attack. You have to be very careful and enemies are very deadly. Uh, Neo is a twist on that uh, done by the people who made a game called Ninja Gaiden, uh, oh, which yeah. combines that game's speed and bloodiness with Dark Souls' incredible difficulty. People are really stoked on it. It's going to be a PlayStation 4 exclusive, I believe. I can't remember if it's also going to be on PC or not, but Sony's definitely getting it as a console exclusive for now. Okay, Halo Wars 2 comes out on Xbox next month. What is new here? Uh, Halo Wars 2 will be simul-launching. I like that word, simul-launching on Xbox One and Windows 10 computers. It's a follow-up to the original Halo Wars, which was only on Xbox 360. Think StarCraft, but with a Halo touch. It's going to have uh, simplified, controller-friendly versions of that sort of um, RTS uh, army management, but also it's going to have a blitz mode for online play, which lets you much more quickly get into like five to eight minute online matches compared to like StarCraft taking 20, 30, 40 minutes. Okay, the next one uh, looked the most interesting to me, I'll be honest. A Night in the Woods, it's featuring the story of college dropout May Borowski returning home, but home isn't the same. That's you pretty much sold what how I would have described it. This is from this team has been working on this. I can't remember their name for a couple of years. Finji. Oh right, uh, they make some really cool indie games, and they are. Uh, it's like almost Daria esque. I loved that cartoon mm -hmm. uh, in the '90s on MTV. I love that sort of take on feminine identity, and it's combined with really good uh, writing and art with uh, an interesting mystery mystery story going on. Uh, very promising. We're all very excited at Ars Technica to play this. Okay, so she's a feminine icon, but she's also a cat. She's a cat, you know. Okay. She's mm -hmm. definitely a girl, yeah. Okay, got it. <laughs> Matters in the plot. Okay, good Good to know. Uh, so For Honor, what's to know about that game? For Honor is from Ubisoft. They've been delaying this game forever. It's finally apparently going to come out. Three-on-three -three combat. You take a sword or an axe to a big battlefield, and it's a rock-paper-scissors thing of you against other people fighting online. It's all about positioning, controlling the turf. It's basically nobody's really gotten a sword-based online game to really work the way that they've gotten gun games to work. Ubisoft have been trying to make this feel good. They seem to have nailed something. We've yet to play the final game, but they've had a recent beta that's very promising. But just that very feeling, if you just want to play an online game and shout, NYX! This game may very well let you do that. So we're hoping it's good. For freedom! <laughs> yes, I, yes. I so like many possibilities. I do like to shout that. Okay, so Horizon is on the top of your list. Can you tell us Ooh, why? I can't because <laughs> oh. I will be able to very soon. But I think I am allowed to say what has been publicly shown off, which is a very Zelda-looking open world, beautiful design, strong female lead, lots of mysteries, and a whole bunch of robot creatures that look kind of like deer and velociraptors that roam in packs. Very intriguing. I will tell you why it's my most awaited game of February next week. Hmm. I remember last week when you said something similar about a game. What was it? Resident Evil. Was it Resident <sighs> Evil 7? Tell me a little bit about that because I'm actually oh, I can, very interested in this. I can tell you guys all about that one now that that's come out. Resident Excellent. Evil 7 came out earlier this week. It's my first pick as an ours recommended game at Ars Technica for the year. Uh, it is incredible. Uh, Resident Evil games in recent years have gotten a little action movie-ish, as opposed to that original feeling of being in a creepy house and not knowing what's going on and having stuff scare the crap out of you out of nowhere. That feeling is back, 
And it's in VR if you want. It's on all of the consoles and on computers. So PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Windows. If you want to play Resident Evil 7 on a screen, just a normal screen, you can do that. It'll scare the crap out of you. It is in first person. And it feels a lot more like all of the horror games that have sort of jumped past Resident Evil in recent years. We're talking about everything from Silent Hill to Amnesia. You know, there's been a lot of good horror games since Resident Evil first broke out. And this game seems to really take some of those elements from other successful games games and add its own creepy twist. Very cinematic, perfect kind of B-movie acting, which is convincing yet enjoyably cheesy, uh, hmm. and some of the most amazing just moments that I've played in a video game in a long time. These are just these kinds of scripted, out-of-nowhere moments that I really suggest if you can get the game as opposed to watching on Twitch or YouTube, you should just get the game. These there's there's these some of these boss fights that just happen. I go, I cannot believe that just happened in a garage. That's sort of like weird, creepy house moment. This is set in small town Louisiana. You're in a plantation trying to save someone you love. Things go bad. I mean, that's really the shortest version. There's lots of blood. It's gross. There's lots of really cool lighting effects. There's bugs and salamanders and chainsaws and everything you might want from a creepy movie about hanging out with a nice Louisiana family that really wants to kill you. Mm, that sounds delightful. So, um, okay, so there is a VR component to this game, a VR version of this game, rather. One of the, one of the questions that I've had when we, I can't remember which system it was, but we had, maybe it was the PlayStation VR, but we had it in-house and there was kind of a horror movie or, or some game that I played through. And I mean, you get to this point where, you know, like in, in first or third person, like shooters and everything, you're used to like doing like, like, you know, basically killing someone, right? But when you when you get into VR, it becomes something entirely different. Like, is this a game that you actually want to do in VR? I feel like that could scar you for life. I think they balanced the nausea and they balanced the fear. This okay. is a game that will not make you, it'll, it'll push you in terms of terror and tension. There's creepy sounds going on all over the place when you're in VR. There's creepy scenery that's sort of jumping out to get you kind of feeling is extra intense, but it is right on the cusp. I think if you are sensitive, if you're the kind of person who struggles with scary video games to begin with, and eh, maybe not put the VR version on. Mm -hmm. I'm the kind of guy who doesn't really get scared by video games. Like they can be kind of creepy or exciting. Right, right, right. I don't go to bed scared at night. But honestly, with the way the world has been lately, I needed something to actually scare the crap out of me to distract me. And I found Resident Evil 7 was perfect for this week. Awesome. <laughs> well, speaking of the horror... <laughs> ah. oh, Francis wow. Ford Coppola wow. uh, has started a Kickstarter <laughs> For an Apocalypse Now video game, is, is, that, is it as exciting as it sounds? Well, I got a chance to talk to the team before they unveiled their Kickstarter. They just hollered at me and said, hey, Ars Technica, you guys like Apocalypse Now? We're making a video game version. And I said, what? And they ended up, the team explained to me some of their ideas and concepts. And then they both pushed a Kickstarter campaign out that has no real gameplay attached. They are asking for $900,000 to make a game that has apparently been in pre-production for eight years. That's a oh. lot of time since the idea cooked up and that they might try to push forward. And they don't even think they'll have it done till 2020. I and everybody else at Ars Technica has a little filter on our emails by default that t sends things with the word Kickstarter into a separate folder <laughs> that normally gets deleted for a reason. Kickstarter fatigue is real. You've got to come out swinging to essentially tell people, here's what we want to do. We just need the money to finish this and this and this. This Kickstarter just kind of throws out quotes from the movie and scenes from the movie and ideas, but it talks a lot about like combat, almost as if they want to make a combat game. There's quotes about how they want to be respectful to the fact that the film was an anti-war game or anti-war film, excuse me, and they want to make a game that's in tune with that. But I just don't think they really know what game they want to make. I think mm -hmm. they want the money first and then they'll come up with something. But they have a prototype video that just looks like pre-rendered ideas and nothing actually playable. And yeah, just say no to unplayable concepts if you go to Kickstarter. Give me a real solid game to look at before I go throwing my money at you. No kidding. Why does Francis Ford Coppola need a Kickstarter? He's a billionaire. I, th I think that the idea is that they want 
independence and not and get money up front without having to go to a publisher. Uh, the, the, what they've talked about is the movie was funded independently because the movie did things that Hollywood didn't think would work mm -hmm. and succeeded accordingly. And I suppose Francis Ford Coppola and his team at American Zoetrope, which is run by his kids among other people, uh, is looking to sort of continue that where they're not just going to throw money blindly. That if if there is a demand for it, if gamers want to play an interactive version of the horror, if they really want to track down Kurtz and get into the madness of the, the Vietnam War, then they can do that. My suggestion, there's a game called Spec Ops The Line. I don't think it's perfect, but I think it really does toy with the things that the Apocalypse Now film did in an interactive form in a really interesting way. I wouldn't call it a fun game, but I would call it an important one. So go that direction if you're really curious about that sort of thing, of how Apocalypse Now could inspire an interesting game or watch the movie or the documentary about making the movie oh, also good <laughs> or watch all five different versions that have been put out in all 25 hours give or take